I'm Staff Sergeant Allie Rose. In the news, General David Petraeus talked about the mission in Afghanistan. As that mission shifts gears, General Petraeus talks about how the core objectives are centered around keeping Al-Qaeda out. To enable that, to accomplish that task, however, we have to help Afghanistan develop the capacity to secure itself and to govern itself. And of course, that's why you need the kind of comprehensive civil military campaign that we're embarked on now. We'll have more of that one-on-one -on -one interview tomorrow on Around the Services. It is now easier for Gulf War veterans to get treatment for certain diseases, including malaria and West Nile virus. Secretary of Veterans Affairs Eric Shinseki announced Wednesday that nine diseases are now included in the Federal Register with new presumptions. They'll, they apply to veterans who served in Southwest Asia beginning on or after the start of Operation Desert Shield to the present, which includes the current conflict in Iraq. Lowering overhead cost is a huge task for the Defense Department as it prepares to trim $100 billion from its budget over the next five years. Deputy Secretary of Defense William Lynn says it is unfair to ask Congress or America to foot the bill unless the DOD has done everything it can to cut costs. The department cannot and should not ask Congress or the American taxpayers for more increases unless and until we have done everything possible to make the dollars we already have count for more. Bridging the gap requires culling the department's massive overhead cost and structure, the tail, and directing them to our fighting forces and modernization accounts. Secretary Lynn also said Secretary Gates called for an in-depth look at Defense Department spending in May. Well, we all know Marines are amphibious, but contrary to popular belief, we're not all born that way. It takes a lot of training and determination to become the deadliest thing on land or sea. However, Lance Corporal Clayton Rogers reports from Iwakuni, Japan, where Marines are also learning how to save lives in the water. The Marines learned different survival strokes and implemented them into their training with the instructors acting as victims. Lance Corporal Shadok Teamer said even though it wasn't a PT session, the training can make you a stronger swimmer. I'm a decent swimmer. I'm not strong, you know, but I feel like I'm, I'm stronger now that I've completed a swim for one. Combat Water Survivor 1 is geared towards saving another's life. But the most important part of the training could be protecting yourself. Because what good are you to another if you drown? The main thing I want to take away from here is uh, when it comes to swimming, uh, especially with uh, survival swimming, is keeping yourself relaxed and control your breathing. Because after those two, if you're not relaxed and you panic, then you become the one who needs to be rescued. During the training scenario, the victim thrashes in the water while the rescue swimmer tries to save them. The instructors emphasized remaining calm and not panicking to the student. Lance Corporal Matthew Howe said this is the key to what's most important to him as an instructor. Knowing that uh, if someone starts drowning, one of the uh, Marines that I teach can save them. He also said it's good to remember not all Marines are strong swimmers like Michael Phelps. Lance Corporal Clayton Rogers, Marine Corps Air Station, Iwakuni, Japan. Now the Marines finished with a 250 meter swim and the Marines put into practice all the different survival strokes they learned earlier in the morning. Well, coming up ahead on Around the Services, one Japanese city is welcoming U.S. airmen with song and dance. But first, jail shakedown. We go downrange where Iraqi security forces storm a jail to check for contraband.